Hi everyone, welcome to UK Media Warrior. Today we're going to be looking at uh, Central Intelligence with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart. Um, comedy action film. First thing we should really probably ask ourselves is, as this is a comedy action film, is it funny? That's probably the most important thing. If it isn't funny, it doesn't meet the mark. Yes, it is funny. However, it isn't funny for the reasons you might think. Now, let's think about this. We have got The Rock, who is becoming, if not has already become, one of the biggest action stars out there at the moment. I mean, he's basically casting everything at the moment. You know, it's, it's San Andreas 2 supposedly coming out. You know, he's casting. You, you look at any uh, cinema movie review show nowadays and nearly Every day or every week, there's a new news thing being pumped out about The Rock. He's now starring in this film. The Rock is now starring in that film. If every one of them were true, he'd be pumping out like 20 films a year. So, yeah, anyway. But The Rock is a good actor. I like him. I liked him when I watched him in the WWE. And he has come across, he's one of the rare wrestlers who has come across to movies and done very well. And that's because he's just a likeable guy. He's, <laughs> his charisma oozes off the screen. He can play it straight, he can play it funny, he can do drama, he can do action. And as is seen in this film, he can do comedy. And this is the thing. Kevin Hart is the comedian here, okay? That's where you should be getting your laughs from. But you don't. Everything I laughed at was because of The Rock. He was really funny in this film. And Kevin Hart just came over as this annoying guy who was just tailing along. It's, it's very odd. I couldn't, I couldn't make my mind up whether they were actually deliberately making Kevin Hart the straight guy here to The Rock's funny guy or whether they were supposed to both be funny. If they were, if Kevin Hart was supposed to be playing it straight, then he succeeded for about the first third of the film, the first act. After that, when it was just him and The Rock on their own, he just got, like I say, he just got annoying. I mean, he was just, he, he went from sort of like an everyday guy with his wife, holding down a job, seemed like a nice guy, steady, you know, fine, absolutely normal. Absolutely fine. You could get on with you could have a drink with him in the pub, whatever. And then the second the second act kicked in and moved into the third act where him and The Rock, like I say, got on their own. It all just fell apart. He just become this whiny, crazy, stupid guy who was just doing idiotic things. And as I say, that kind of humour doesn't make me laugh. But The Rock showed his com comic chops here definitely because he did make me laugh and he's he is fantastic in this film absolutely fantastic and he is the one thing that saves it the problem is kevin hart has done this will be his third film in the last two years which is basically exactly the same he's done ride along which was in 2014 with ice cube he did ride along 2 which came out in january of this year with ice cube and now he's done central intelligence in june and july all three are interchangeable. I mean, all the ride-along films are this young black guy out of his element, dumped into a situation. He has to go with this trained dude in, in ride-along. It's a cop um, who has to take him under his wing and try and keep him alive while they try and solve a case. In Central Intelligence, obviously, it's The Rock who plays a CIA agent trying to keep him alive while they try and sort out the case. But it's exactly the same. And I think... That's the issue here. That's going to be the problem for central intelligence. Will it have the legs to hold out? Probably not, because people are going to go and see it once, and they're going to come out thinking, oh, okay, it was okay, but I've seen that twice already from the same actor over the last two years. Why do I, I don't need to go and see it again. I'll wait for it to come out on DVD or whatever. So, yeah, I think Kevin's... Kevin Hart's probably going to have a bit of a problem here if he doesn't change up his game plan. Think of new things to do. As I say, The Rock comes out of it shining. There's a couple of uncredited guest appearances. Justin, ba Justin Bateman shows up as The Rock's nemesis from high school. 
which is funny. Once again, not Kevin Hart, but Justin Bateman in, in a later on scene, about halfway through the film, um, when they meet up again uh, in his office, that was funny. Uh, he was funny, but he was unintentionally funny, probably, because he wasn't, you know, once again, Kevin Hart was sitting there, but people weren't looking at Kevin Hart. They were looking at Justin Bateman on the screen. Melissa McCarthy, another uncredited uh, uh, appearance. Um, she manages to get her face on just about every film these days. I am so sick of seeing her on everything. She isn't funny anymore. I never really liked her in the first place. She's just... She just plays the same character in every damn film. And the only reason she managed to get onto this one and she's uncredited, which probably means she did this for no pay, was because she got to make out with The Rock at the end. And she probably thought, well, hey, I'll do that for a, you know, a day of shooting and, you know, I won't get paid, but pff, I'm going to be on screen making out with The Rock. But, yeah, oh, I just really have trouble with that woman I just don't know why she gets into so many films and none of them are really doing that well lately her name is not a box office draw at the moment they've all been pretty underwhelming so why she keeps getting these gigs I honestly don't know it's really quite sad another thing I took a little bit of an exception to here I know it's a comedy but at the start of the film um, as you would have seen in the trailers probably um, the Rock plays an, an overweight black kid who gets picked on by four jocks in, their, in his high school. And while they're picking on him in the locker room, out in the basketball court area, the, the dean or the, the principal, or whatever you call him in high school, it's high school, I, I don't know, <laughs> um, is doing this speech about it's the last time that class will ever be together, that they're all graduating, and basically he's telling them how, you know, how great they are, and he introduces Kevin Hart's younger character here as like the golden jet, as <laughs> like the star sportsman and jock in the, in, in the school. And as this is all happening, these four kids drag the naked rock out of the locker room into the basketball court and throw him start naked in the middle of the foot in the middle of the court next to the dean or the principal and, and next to kevin hart's character and everyone's laughing and all the teachers are there and they're all just sitting around and they're sort of like holding their heads like oh my god you know why did they do that uh, you know none of them do anything there's no reaction from the teachers. There's no reaction from the principal. The only person who does any, the right thing is Kevin Hart, who takes off his jacket and gives it to The Rock to hide his privates so The Rock can make a beat a hasty retreat. And that hit me. That didn't feel right. It felt very uncomfortable for me. I mean, obviously, it was supposed to feel uncomfortable. And this is a comedy film, and I get that. But all the way through the film, the Rock is against bullying. He says it many times, you know, I don't like bullies, and then he beats somebody up. And if that's supposed to be the point of your film, if that's what you're trying to drive over to the audience, bullies are bad, they can't get away with it. Starting off with that scene where a naked young boy is thrown into the centre of a court amongst all of the other school kids and all of the teachers, totally humiliating him, and nothing happens to the four guys who do it, who are standing there, out in the open, everyone knows they did it, everyone saw them do it, and all the teachers are just like, yeah, well, we can't be bothered. You know, the principal is like, eh, whatever. You know, they're, they're all looking at the poor kid in the court as if it's his fault. And then when he runs away and manages to get out of there, they're all still laughing about it. And the only person who does anything good outside is Kevin Hart's character. Now, obviously, that is you're smashed over the head with that because that will come back later as he is now hero-worshipped by the older Rock because he was the only one who was nice to him in school. And it just feels so weird and out of place because, as I say, one, it makes me very uncomfortable that they showed that where kids are going to watch this film and they're going, to go, they're going to look at it probably, you know, the, the bad seeds in the audience go look at it and go, well, hey, if the teachers don't care, I can get away with this shit. So that's one. Secondly, out of all those people 
Kevin Hart's character is the only one who did anything nice. I find that very hard to believe. You know, as I say, free, none of the teachers or any of the adults did anything against the four guys who inflicted this humiliation on the Rock's character. So that entire scene just didn't work for me. It was very uncomfortable. I didn't like it at all. It certainly wasn't laugh worthy. Uh, anyone who does laugh at that probably needs to be uh, looking at themselves in the mirror and, and wondering why they found such humiliation to be funny. So anyway, I did enjoy the film. Um, I haven't seen Ride Along um, and I haven't seen Ride Along 2. So that's probably why I enjoyed this one so much. But as I say, I didn't enjoy it because of Kevin Hart. I enjoyed it because of The Rock. So does that mean I would like Ride Along, Ride Along 2? <sighs> probably not. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. The plot itself is pretty standard and straightforward. You've seen it done dozens of times over the last few years. And it's done a lot, be lot better. The plot is very weak. There isn't much story here. It's It stands up purely on the comic elements. Is there a chemistry between the two leads? Yeah, they do get on well together. And there is a chemistry that you can feel as you're watching the movie on the screen. So that's good. And that sucks you in and makes you emote and, and, and connect with, with their characters. But it, it isn't... It's not a great film, all, all in all, all-encompassing. You know, is it well written? No. Is it well acted? Well, yeah. I mean, for what they're given, it, it's well done. The Rock, once again, is the standout. Everybody else is sort of like just there, hitting their marks, saying their, their scenes, and that's pretty much it. You know, the, the, as I say, the story is, is very weak. The writing is very weak. The plot is very weak. So you'll get to the end of it, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. If you hadn't already figured it out, you're not going to be really that surprised when you get to the end and see the bigger reel. So I just hope there isn't a Central Intelligence 2 because we don't need a Central Intelligence 2. We didn't need a Ride Along 2 probably, but Kevin Hart did it to get some more money. Um, and that's what it feels like it is. It's just him getting a paycheck, making these films that are pretty much a duplicate of each other and just getting paid for it. And that's not good enough nowadays. Not, not in Hollywood. They should be able to do better than this. So out of 10, I'm going to give this one a 6.5. Um, yeah, made me laugh. Made me laugh from the wrong people. Probably to say The Rock was the one that made me laugh the most. Um, so I came out of it feeling, yeah, okay. It was a, well, it was an okay film, but nothing I'm going to rush to see again. So 6.5 out of 10 for me. I uh, hope you guys do enjoy it if you go and see it. And... Uh, Keep watching as more film reviews will be coming up. You guys take care and I'll see you all later.